so we have discussed this action potential graph okay now we'll continue with the next top slide we have different properties of nerve fibers okay we are discussing about nerve fiber we are discussing about the conduction in the nerve fiber so we have uh, lots of property of nerve fiber start, let's start discussing about the properties of nerve fiber first is all or nothing principle this is also known as or all none law okay so applies to all normal excitable tissues and the depolarization process travels over the entire membrane if conditions are right but it does not travel at all if conditions are not right it means your impulse will travel or not travel two two conditions are there uh, first condition is if you stimulate there is a chances that your impulse will travel from one point to another if you have stimulated there may be a chances that stimulus will not travel because for traveling of the impulse you need a stimulus of higher than a threshold value okay so a law stating that certain structures such as a neuron or a muscle fiber either respond completely or not at all to a stimulus so that is that is describing all or non law i am again repeating a law stating that certain structures such as a neuron or a muscle fiber either respond completely or not at all to a stimulus there is no partial nerve impulse in neuron or partial contraction of the fiber so what is it if you stimulate you will get a impulse if you if you stimulate you will not get a impulse whether the contraction will happen or it will not happen it is not like that something partial if the stimulus is any strength above threshold the nerve or muscle fiber will either give a complete response or no response okay so when you stimulate when you stimulate above threshold the level of the value the nerve or muscle fiber will either give a complete response or no response so this is a all or none law so coming to the next property refractory period it is a period which an excitable cell cannot generate another action potential in response to a stimulus normal threshold stimulus so what is it when an excitable cell cannot generate another action potential in response to the normal threshold stimulus when let's suppose uh, we just understand with an example you have stimulated a nerve that is that nerve is an excitable nerve you have stimulated an action potential is generated again you are stimulating with the same intensity with the same value but this time your nerve is not responding this is known as refractory period so types of refractory period let's let discuss one by one uh one first one is absolute refractory period what is it it is in which cannot initiate a second action potential even a very strong stimulus so this refractory period is if you stimulate a nerve with strong stimulus your nerve will not give any response and this is known as absolute refractory period in this period coincide coincide with the period of voltage gated sodium channels 
activation gates are inactivating and cannot reopen they first must return to the resting state so when your sodium channels are open and they are closing when they are closing at that time you will stimulate they will not going to transmit any information they need to get back to the resting state then the pump will reopen okay next is relative refractory period during which a second action potential can be evoked but only if the stimulus strength is increased so if we have stimulated with a amount of strength and you want to again stimulate the same now with a amount of stimulus at the refractory period the stimulus which is given by you the same strength of stimulus the nerve will not excite if you want to excite just improve the intensity of stimulus just improve the intensity of stimulus okay so we have absolute absolute refractory period or relative refractory period so if you want to stimulate if you want to stimulate so if you want to stimulate a nerve again so at that time you have to give you have to give a stimulus with intensity more than more than previous one okay so this is the graph of absolute refractory period and relative refractory period here you can see that this is a absolute refractory period this portion and this is a relative refractory period okay so if you want to stimulate you have given a stimulation and here your threshold value from polarize to depolarize then repolarize okay so at this phase if you want to give another stimulus the stimulus will not carry it out but this one this portion is a relative refractory period and at this portion you will stimulate and if you want the response then increase the intensity of stimulation and you will get the response clear so is it clear with the graph absolute refractory period portion and relative refractory period of portion so moving to the next slide plateau in some action potentials so what is plateau in some action potential in some instances the excited membrane does not repolarize immediately after depolarization instead the potential remains on the plate near the peak of the spike potential for many milliseconds this type of action potential occurs in heart muscle fiber and the plateau ends when the calcium sodium channels closes and permeability to potassium ion increases so what happens just see to this graph this is your action potential and in this phase the depolarization occur and this is your threshold value uh, action potential value you have seen in the previous graphs here you can see that this this graph moves up moves up stays here for a millisecond and then falls back but in your heart muscle this doesn't happen your action potential rises reaches the value and then for the some time it remains in a positive direction for a fractions of milliseconds and then it falls back 
and this occurs due to the due to the opening of calcium and sodium channels calcium and sodium channels are not closed here and this type of electrical activity you will see in the heart muscles okay so next is rhythmicity of some excitable tissue and repetitive discharge a repetitive self induced discharges occur normally in the heart in most smooth muscles and in the many of the neurons of the central nervous system and these rhythmical discharges causes rhythmical beat of the heart rhythmical peristalsis of the intestine and neuronal events as the rhythmical control of the breathing okay so in your body a rhythmical contraction rhythmical discharge of the impulses continuously occurs for example in your heart which is continuously breathe, beating for example your food movements in your intestine and the breathing which you are doing 24/7 all other excitable tissues can discharge repetitive if the threshold for stimulation of the tissue cell is reduced to a low enough level even large nerve fibers and skeletal muscle fibers which normally are highly stable discharge repetitively when they are placed in a solution that contains a contains the drug veratrinine which activates sodium ion channels or when the calcium ion concentration decreases below a critical value which increases the sodium permeability to the membrane so it is a it is a, a, a practical phenomena if you want to uh, if you want that your large muscles like quadriceps biceps and skeletal muscles yeah so it is a it is a, a practical situation if you want to your bus biceps and triceps muscles or biceps muscles should uh, contract repetitively like your heart muscles so you have to create a situation where the level of the calcium falls drastically so that the permeability of the sodium ion increases and the movement takes place automatically inside and outside the cell so that uh, situation will lead to the continuous firing of the skeletal muscles so next is conductivity it is the ability of the nerve fiber to transmit the impulse from the area of stimulation to the other area okay we have discussed this when you when you stimulate your impulse travels from one point to the another point. an action potential is transmitted through the nerve fiber as nerve impulse normally in the body the action potential is transmitted through the nerve fiber in only one direction in myelinated nerve fiber the conductivity of action potential is saltatory or jumping conditions jumping conductions and in unmyelinated nerve fiber the conductivity of action potential is continuous conduction so what is it we have two type of nerve fibers one is myelinated and another one is unmyelinated so in myelinated you have a myelin sheath so the conduction in that type of fiber is very fast and the conduction type is called saltatory conduction and in unmyelinated fiber the the velocity of conduction of impulses is less in comparison to the myelinated nerve fiber and the movement of impulses is continuous conduction here you can see that diagram this is this is a saltatory conduction node to node transfer of impulses is known as saltatory conduction 
and this transfer of impulses from this point here you have stimulated the movement takes place in this direction here you have stimulated the movement takes place in this direction okay so here the impulse will travel along the x one but here the impulse will jump from one point to the another point okay so this is a saltatory conduction and this is your normal conduction flow so next point is graded potentials graded potentials are changes in membrane potential that are confined to a relatively small region of the plasma membrane graded potentials are given various names related to the location of the potentials or functions they perform so what is graded potentials it is a changes changes in the membrane potential that is confined to a relatively small region of the plasma membrane okay so different if we talk about different types of graded potential is receptor potential synaptic potential and pacemaker potential Graded potential can be recorded under experimental condition in which the stimulus strength can vary. Such experiment shows the graded potential means uh, it is it is a uh, experimental condition where you change the strength of stimulus. You give 10 millivolt, then you give 15 millivolt, then you give 20 millivolt, then you give 25 millivolt. This type of potentials. Are uh, so this type of stimulus are given on nerve fibers, and this nerve fibers are under examination, and exa uh, the, that scientists and researchers just try to see the response of the nerve at different intensities of stimulus. Such experiment shows the graded potential, such as can be depolarizing or hyperpolarize can vary in size and conduct decrementally in this example the resting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolt so what is it just see this diagram first one here a stimulus is given okay and the stimulus shows a positive response and same stimulus is given and here you got a negative response so the response can vary here you have given a stimulus you have seen this much amount of deflection you have increased the stimulus now you have got a bigger response okay so this is experimental uh, methods which are used for the study of nerve conductions and nerve conductivity so this is uh, not very important in in relation to your examination point of view but uh, the things we have discussed all are non law refractory period okay plateau in some uh, some action potential Rhythmicity in the repetitive discharges, conductivity. Okay, so these are uh, important, and these are your um, some some characteristics and some features of your nerve which they normally poses and behave in different set of stimulations that are set of environment.